CPU versus GPU. How much should you spend on each? Should you spend more on your GPU or your CPU? And which one is the worst to get bottleneck from? Today, we're gonna find out. To do this, I'm gonna list some benefits and detriments of being bottlenecked by either your CPU or your GPU. Some benefits of being bottlenecked by your GPU as opposed to your CPU is that while you're being bottlenecked by your GPU, you can still turn down settings in games to get a playable frame rate. On the other hand, if you're bottlenecked by your CPU, there's not always an ability to get a playable frame rate because even if you turn down settings, your CPU usage may not necessarily go down and you'll still be stuck with stuttering issues and or unplayable frame rates. The second reason is that a PC is not meant only for gaming. And this is an argument that people will bring up over and over again when comparing PCs to consoles is that a PC is not a dedicated gaming machine. It does other stuff such as, you know, video editing or running, you know, Windows applications. And all these things are very, very heavy on the CPU and not at all heavy on the GPU, which means that if your CPU bottleneck in gaming, which is probably the most GPU intensive task you're going to be doing, that's not really a balanced machine in terms of a personal computer. It might be okay for a gaming system, but again, a PC is more than just a gaming machine. Now, a third reason, which is a bit of a continuation of the first reason, is that some games will require you to have a minimum CPU to be able to run the game. Whereas most games do not require you to have a minimum GPU to run the game. Sure, they'll have a recommended minimum most of the time, but honestly, you can run pretty much every game just off of integrated HD graphics. If you check out Low Spec Gamers, another YouTube channel, and he does all these videos on how you can get AAA titles to run off of integrated graphics, you'll be pretty surprised on exactly what games you can get uh, to run off of your HD 530 or 510. And yes, you can run Witcher 3 off of it too. Now the fourth reason is that it's a lot easier to upgrade your GPU as opposed to CPU in the future if you want to do so. For example, let's say you want to upgrade your CPU. Well, first of all, you have to make sure that you only upgrade the CPUs that your motherboard can support unless you want to upgrade that as well. Second, sometimes you have to take out the CPU cooler, reapply thermal gel. Uh, if your motherboard and or case does not you know, have a way of undoing the backplate without taking it out, then sometimes you have to take the motherboard out of the case and rewire everything. And it can be a pretty big hassle just to upgrade a CPU. Whereas if you want to just upgrade a GPU, chances are all you have to do is take out the power connectors off of your existing GPU, unplug it from your PCI Express socket, and put the new one in, and it should be good to go. On the same note, if you want to sell off your old CPU as opposed to selling off your old GPU when it comes to upgrading, is that your GPU does not retain value nearly as well as your CPU does. For example, let's compare a four-year-old CPU to, new, to the current version as opposed to a four-year GPU to the current version. Let's compare, for example, the i5-2500 to something like the i5-6500. Now, the i5-6500 is significantly better, but only about 40 to 50% at most, whereas something like the GTX 580 is way worse than the GTX 1080. The GTX 1080 is probably like 10 times better than the 580. This means that if you spend more money on your CPU, you're likely to retain a lot of that value into the future, more so than you would if you spent that money on your GPU. And it means that the extra money you spent on a better CPU is likely to last you longer than the GPU would. Now, those are a lot of reasons why you should spend more on your CPU, but what about reasons why you should spend more on your GPU? Surely there are some of these as well, right? Well, sure, there are. For example, let's say you want to spend some money on your GPU, but you can't spend enough to get to a sweet spot in terms of price to performance. An example of this is something like the GTX 1050 Ti. If you can only spend, say, $140, then GTX 1050 Ti is the only thing that you can get at that price point. However, if you were to allocate another $20, $30 on it, you could get something like the RX 470, which is about 25% better for only 20 extra dollars. Now that is a pretty sweet spot in terms of price to performance. And yes, it means if it means that you have to step down from an i5-6400 to an i3-6100, I think in that case, it will be worth it to get the RX 470 because of the overall better price to performance as opposed to getting an i5-6400 and a GTX 1050 Ti. But don't worry, I'm not going to end this video without giving you some general tips as to what CPU goes well in terms of balance with what GPU. First thing I like at least, an i3-6100 goes fairly well with a GTX 1050 Ti, even if the 1050 Ti is not perfect in terms of price to performance.
You can also get an RX 470, but beware that your GPU might be a little bit overpowered and you'll be CPU bottleneck in some games. Now for an i5, be it a 6500 or a 6600, you're better off with something like an RX 480 or GTX 1060. Anything above that, such as a 1070 and a 1080, you're looking at at least an i5 6600K overclocked something like 4.2 to 4.4 gigahertz, or ideally something like the i7 6700K to make sure that you're not gonna be bottlenecked by your GPU because let's be honest, why spend like $400 to $600 on a GPU if you're gonna be bottlenecked by your $200 CPU? It just makes no sense. So when in doubt, I think it's safer to err on the side of your CPU as opposed to GPU because of all the reasons I just mentioned before. And that about sums up this video. So if you liked it, be sure to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel. If you didn't like it, be sure to leave a comment telling me why. I appreciate constructive criticism so you can help me out. Thank you for watching and have a good day.